Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this Bruin case, man. I'm really excited for this one. We got the story from the Daily News. It'll make you laugh. NYC Mayor Adams alarmed over pending Supreme Court ruling that could ease concealed weapons rules. Mm -hmm. Quote, it keeps me up at night. Aw, poor baby. A pending U.S. Supreme Court decision that would allow more concealed weapons to be carried on New York City streets has been keeping Mayor Adams up at night. All of us should be extremely alarmed about what the Supreme Court can do. When he says all of us, is he referring to establishment authoritarians? Because Yes. Right. Not the people. Correct. That's not what he means. Yes. Yes. Because he's worried about the wild, wild west, he says, right? Here's the problem. I live in New York City. It is the wild, wild west now. <laughs> exactly. This, <laughs> no, this future dystopian thing you think of is today. Right. So, so it's, that, it's, yes, is that hilarious? Like Democrats always warn you about the possibility of what they've already done. Yes, it's already <laughs> there. Will be crime everywhere. It's like yes, no. We know that that's a possibility because it's happening in the places it's where now. you're in control. Yes. Check this out. They say under the state central law, New Yorkers must show a specific need for why they should be able to carry a concealed firearm before they're permitted to do so. However, in most states, they just reject your reason. <laughs> They go, well, you need a reason. That's not a good reason, Yes, which is ridiculous. That law was challenged by the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association, bravo, good sirs and and, and, and ladies, which claimed it violated 2A under the Constitution. Supreme Court justices have suggested that they agree that the law infringes on gun owner rights and is expected to rule on the case during the current term. The decision would also impact California, Hawaii, Maryland, New Mm -hmm. Jersey, and Massachusetts. Oh, you love to hear it. Yes. It keeps me up at night. We have some of the most stringent gun permitting laws. I'm extremely concerned about this. My legal team is talking to other cities to determine how we can come together to prepare for this ruling. Here's what I'd love. All right. In D.C. v. Heller, Supreme Court basically said the right to keep and bear arms extends to all states, not just from the federal government. The idea before was that the federal government could not infringe upon your right to keep and bear arms, but states could. Mm -hmm. D.C. v. Heller was like, no, everyone can have guns. And well, I'm sorry, that wasn't the case. Uh, that that was the case as as it pertained, uh, permitted uh, uh, pertained to the federal government in D.C. versus Heller. They were like, the federal government can't stop you from having a handgun. It was McDonald v. Chicago, where two years later they said, yes, this includes all of the states as well, because it was the D.C. jurisdiction. Now it was state. Now it was all the states. So it was nationwide. You could keep and bear arms. All of a sudden, we see a wave across the country of shall issue states, meaning you apply for a concealed mm-hmm. carry permit. You got to get. Here's what I'm hoping for. I am hoping for the one in a billion uh, chance ruling that the Supreme Court says, in fact, any requirement of a permit is an is an infringement upon your right to keep and bear arms. Because let's be honest, it is. If you have to get permission from the government and they can say no, your rights are being infringed. If it was to not infringe upon your rights, the government has no say whatsoever. I can keep and bear arms. You can't stop me. What about a corporation? I know you are a 2A purist. I know you are. Yeah. I'm actually not a 2A purist. Well, you're I'm wrong. actually not a purist. And you need to leave, sir. We're going to have to ask you to leave. And here is my exception. I think you could have a regulation. It is possible in theory. Not in practice because of how it works. But in theory, it, you could have a regulation on firearms that does not infringe. How so? An example might be if you are going to, let's say this happens and a, a bunch of people decide to buy firearms and we find that smaller statured people don't understand the power of uh, you know, certain firearms and the backlash is, is, is hurting them. And the state would say, hey, if you're going to sell a firearm, you have to put a rating system on it that would say big, small, little, whatever. That's a, that's a, that's a regulation, but it doesn't stop me from buying. I can buy what I want. But if I choose to sell it, I've got to let someone know this is rated one, two, or three when it comes to recoil. So I think that type of regulation doesn't infringe, but may be good for the population as a whole to understand. Well, so, so, so in, in what way do you see that actually uh, – something like that being implemented – I'm saying I'm saying you said you're a purist. I'm just pushing back on the purist well, I'm not, aspect. I'm, I'm not saying I, I disagree so, with like a rating system. Or yeah, like I think when There's, it comes to things like commerce, if you were to say you you have to make sure that you know you you maybe you give your caliber in both you know imperial and metric or something like I'm making these up obviously. But if you were to create a regulation like that, that doesn't infringe. It simply lets the consumer I, know what they're purchasing. I think it does infringe. I know you're a purist. Why well, I was teasing you? You're putting a, you're, <laughs> that's exactly you're, why. You're, yes. So the the, the, the challenge is. I think the government using circuitous methods to try and restrict things is a common tactic, and we shouldn't tolerate it. But again, remember I said in theory, not in practice. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Because in practice, the government will always do that. You know what they did with the stamp tax for marijuana? Yep. They they said, you want to buy marijuana, you got to buy a stamp. Then they stopped issuing stamps. Yes. Yeah, you know, homie don't play that. So when you've got gun stores, and they're like, we want to sell guns. 
Then all of a sudden, the government says it's not an infringement upon the individual's right to keep and bear arms. It's a regulation for businesses. What happens when these businesses then go, OK, we'll do the rating system. Who certifies the rating system? They go DHS. OK, how do we get that done? Well, DHS is shut down for the next year. Sorry, you can't sell guns anymore. So it's an infringement. Infringement is, def- is defined as an, as an act so as to limit or undermine something. If in any way there is a law passed requiring you to do a thing, they are limiting your ability. And if it's the commerce of that is a private citizen's right to keep and bear arms and transact it as such. So let me push back then. It does say well-regulated. Now, when they said regulated, what they meant was to make regular, but, right? But, to do things like to say what is regular. But that has nothing to do with the, 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 with the, uh, um, with the direction of the Second Amendment. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall yes, not be infringed. Yes, but De- to, descriptive to, statement to is make irrelevant. regular would mean to say things like um, to understand what caliber is, right? To but, make but, a contract rule that I know when I'm purchasing ammunition, what is a dozen? But that things has nothing like that. to do with the with Second Amendment. Says regulate right in the Second Amendment. And, and, and why does it say that? To make it regular. It would be like me saying um, libraries being mm-hmm. important for someone to read, yep. the people have a right to access books. Sure. That doesn't mean the books can be regulated or anything. It's me making a point about. But what if it so, said in a well-regulated library? What if it? The, what if the it Second Amendment doesn't say that. But what if it, it says a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. Yeah. So what if it said in people but, need so, to have well-regulated libraries? Let's say it said that. The people need to be able to have books. But the Second Amendment does not require anything to be regulated. I didn't, say, it, I didn't say it requires. So, so what's the, what's the point of? Bringing? I'm I'm saying that you could have a rule. Uh, a, 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 you could have a law in theory. Again, I'm, I'm purposely saying theory. In theory, you could have a way of making the practice of selling a firearm regular that would not infringe on someone purchasing it. But what I'm regular saying. has nothing to do with what is prescribed in the Second Amendment. It is describing their opinion yep. on why people should have guns. And then it says separately, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It also says a well-regulated militia should not be infringed. I think that they're saying that it, it doesn't say that. a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It sounds like they're specifically saying that the, a well-regulated, your right to establishing a well-regulated militia shall not be infringed. It's not saying that. I mean, the rest of it is just descriptive. So the original Second Amendment Mm -hmm. actually went on to argue that um, military or militia involvement Mm -hmm. has no bearing on whether or not you can keep or bear an arm. That was actually included in the original draft. They removed it because they were scared that it would Mm -hmm. argue conscription isn't allowed, that people could reject conscription. So, So let me then move to the next important piece, which you have states like California and New York. And again, I'm a New Yorker, so I get this. About every poll you take in New York State, about 60%, give or take, of New Yorkers actually want more gun control. Too bad. <laughs> I'm just saying they want it. Yeah. So with that in mind, politicians are going to act accordingly, right? right. They're going to. Regardless of constitution, they're going to act accordingly. So they're going to try their damnness to stop everything they possibly can. So how do you move forward in a state like California, New York, that is going to go out of its way to simply go, No. Just no. Federal and, intervention. And we do it already. Like if you go to New York City right now it, with, a, with a firearm that you own, it is, un, it is locked and unloaded. It is following every single TSA guideline to the letter. You will go to Rikers Island. That's right. They will take you and put you to Rikers Island. They wait for people to land mm-hmm. knowing that they have guns in the checked baggage. Yep. And they wait as soon as you put a finger on the bag. Yep. They come and arrest you. Correct. That's that right. is New York City. That yep. is exactly correct. New Jersey, Maryland, very similar. Yes. So how do you... Because these cops are scumbags. So I know what you want, and I get what you want. I'm actually not against what you're saying. Oh, I, I want... I, I'm trying to say, but I have a realistic issue here in my state where most of my people in my state think that more regulation is a good idea. I don't care what they think. And you don't have to. You're not a politician. Right, uh, right. If you're a politician, you've got to care because they're going to vote for you. They're going to put you in yep. charge. And they're, and they're the ones who are going to put the DAs in charge. So the DAs can decide who they're going to prosecute, who they're not. Mm-hmm. Right? The DAs in New York City do this job because the people in New York City want them to. That's right. why they're doing it. They're voting for these DAs to do this. And so the people want this. So we would need 
federal intervention into, into New York to stop the infringement upon people's rights. And I view it as no, no different than if, let's say, New York decided they were going to segregate schools mm -hmm. and the National Guard or Army had to be called in to, de to, to, uh, uh, to desegregate. That's probably a good idea, actually, in New York, because they do segregate schools. But right. anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> that's besides the point. My yes. view of things is that um, the Constitution is it's the founding document, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the supreme law of this land. You got a problem with it, you can amend it. You need popular support to do so, and you're not going to get it. Yeah. You can try. And I, I say that realistically. By all means, I encourage everyone to try to petition all of the states to have a con convention of states to make the changes that they hope will happen. There's a reason why gun access is expanding. It's because most people actually want access to mm -hmm. guns. When they say most people want gun control, it's because advocacy groups are lying to you. And I mean that absolutely. They say things like, do you think there should be background checks for gun purchases? And most people say, for sure. Yeah, most people do. Because do that. there yep. are. Yep. Then they say, people want universal background checks. Then they say, what we're talking about is private sales. You didn't ask that of the person when you took the poll. Right. You look at, you, you look at uh, liberal gun owners, of which there are many. Yep. You look at Democrats, and it's like 50 some odd percent own weapons. You look at states like Vermont, places like where Bernie Sanders comes from, and this shows you the duplicitousness of these politicians, that Bernie Sanders comes from a state that has actually one of the lowest ages for owning a gun, mm -hmm. that has some of the highest gun ownership, where he campaigned in 2015 saying, weapons is a urban versus rural issue. Yep. Today, he says, these gun control laws don't go far enough yeah. Yeah. because he's just <laughs> yes. a lie. It's, it's like you described. Yes. They just want to get elected. Yes. And they won't just stand up and say, this is what is and why it is. And if you want to change it, we can work to change it. But this is the way things are. Just because 60% of people in New York want to strip the rights away mm -hmm. from the American people does not mean they get to. Yeah. Sadly, and this is the piece I'll bring up again, and people get mad when I say this. The only party that is even trying to do what you're talking about is the Libertarian Party. That's right. The only one. Republicans are, are, are caving. Democrats in this one, I'll give them credit. The, 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 I'll give them credit where credit is due. At least they're open about grabbing the guns. At least they're open. At least they're saying we hate guns. That's one thing they're saying. No, they, the they, the they, Republicans they, say they love guns and then still support grabbing the guns. It's true, it's but yeah. you know, among Democrats, they go, no one is trying to ban your guns. Oh, no, they That's say ridiculous. take your guns. Yes, right. They are trying to ban the guns. They're not mm -hmm. trying to take them. I had yeah. a conversation. What they do is they make you, they make you a criminal retroactively is how Democrats right. do. And they're very good. They did my state. ATF did it with, yes. the, uh, with the with the 80% lowers. 100%. They're doing it with ghost guns. They're going to do it with 3D printed guns. Yep. So I was I was talking to one of these um, uninitiated people who don't know anything about guns, but for some reason want to regulate them. They have, <laughs> the they, they, they have no idea what they're talking about. And they, made it, they posted a meme where it said, no one is trying to ban your guns. And then I said, here's a list of my guns that are banned in right. Maryland. So uh, why? The one I love to bring up is the M1A, which is a banned assault weapon in Maryland, but the SCAR 20S is totally fine, even though they're a similar caliber mm -hmm. and one's more modern and arguably better. How does that make sense? How does it make sense that you can load up a KSG 25 with 41 mini slugs, but you can't have a six shot semi automatic Benelli? Because right. the laws make no sense. Correct. It's not about, it's, it's, it is, it, it's, you know what? You've described it perfectly. Angry people who, are, who don't know what they're talking about. Politicians who say, yeah, 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 throw them whatever they yes. want. And the system crumbles around us because corrupt politicians offer stupid people non-solutions that just gum up the system. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.